What you guys doing? We need a big fan. Okay, we have done Montreal. It was awesome. Highly recommend it. Oh, Lots of fun? Yeah. You guys have fun yeah, in Montreal? I have my long blonde friends. So now we're headed to Burlington, Vermont. Mm -hmm. Never been there and it's only two hours away. And then from there we'll head over to Maine. We're boondocking tonight. We're offsetting the cost of being in a city. We'll probably make spaghetti. <laughs> and we're sleeping in some random parking lot. So we've got to even out everything that we just spent eating at restaurants. Bonjour. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So agriculture is going to take a quick peek at you guys. Uh, uh, we admitted to three tomatoes. Okay, they're just going to take those. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let me just give Hold you a second. Not any trouble. Okay. Just do me a favor. Cut them in half and I'll let you keep them. Okay, very good. Oh, really? Not, not the onion. Not the orange. But the tomatoes, yeah. Oh, man. That's awesome. <laughs> I thought it was like, what orange? <laughs> 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 okay, this is it. I swear. I swear. Okay, thank Can I you. Can some more in? <laughs> Don't choke on me. Okay, sure. <laughs> Dad, I want more Okay, in. where's the trash can? Get, you, you're going to need, like, shh, yeah, give, give a trash can. Let me He's get it. He's with an orange situation. Oh, here. Okay. <laughs> 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 I can't have peels sitting here, man. What are you doing to me? <laughs> This is what I get for being nice. Yes, this is what you get, yes. What the heck? Oh my gosh, Mark. You just, right, <laughs> he's going to gonna choke on his heart. Don't just... choke on me, man. You're, not, you're just going straight, all right? Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mouth dripping oranges. He's like, I need those peels, man. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, what is this, a joke? <laughs> <laughs> oh. This is what I get for being nice. Oh my gosh. Like going into the fridge. Yeah, it's I'm like a, all produce. It's just nothing but plums, <laughs> and I look at him like, oh my god. <laughs> was he in there with you? No. Oh good. He went to the door and says, oh, you pulled them out for me. I'm like, yes. I pretty much just had orange juice <laughs> in my hands. My what hands are all sticky. What do you think he had? You gave him. I know. I know. And then you put him in. You're like, I'm tapped out, and they're like falling out of his hands, and he's like, you go this. <laughs> so he's gonna pick them up off the ground for you. It's terrible. <laughs> We're in Burlington, Burlington, Vermont. We found the college campus near the park, near the water. Perfect place for the boys to just ride their bikes. We're gonna go on a little walk. We're gonna come back to this little spot, parked right there. Trisha's gonna make a little dinner. And it's too hot here, so we're gonna then drive a couple hours toward Maine, New Ham, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, and uh, and then we're gonna go to sleep somewhere, we're gonna boondock somewhere, and then uh, just continue to make our way. Come on. That's a big dog. Holy moly. That was a big dog. Made Maddie look small. Maddie used to be big though. 
Maddie was 80 pounds in her in her glory. Now Maddie is, I think she weighed like Ready? 55. Ready? You wanna get it? Go fetch. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm not even used to seeing a dog run like that. Okay, so we've been getting some questions regarding the cost of this, which is a completely reasonable question. So basically what, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tally up some of the costs of the RV parks and the food cost and the fuel cost and everything so we can break it down. So there'll be an upcoming episode with that information. Um, but let me just tell you right now, we've gone uh, 6,900 miles since we left Arizona 70 some days ago. And our average fuel economy is 8.9, and that's with the trailer on and off. And our fuel gallons used is 772 gallons. That's really the most accurate way to figure out uh, how much it's cost. So the, let's just say the average price per gallon is about, has been roughly about $2.25. So Trish, you have a calculator. What's $2.25 times 700 and 72. 225 Oh my times gosh, this hill is huge. 225 times what? Uh, 773 times, times 225. Times $2.25. 1700 Okay, so we spent $1,739 on fuel in the past 70 days. So what's that divided by 70? $24 a day in fuel. That seems like a lot. It does seem like a lot. Fun to get set up in a in a campground. I kind of like the process. Maddie can smell the water. She's excited. You smell the water, girl. Yeah. You smell the water. So what we're gonna do here at Morning's is we're gonna get set up in a um, in a in a campsite, and then we reserved an oceanfront campsite for the second half. We'll be here for ten days before we head down to Kenny Bunkport. And from the look of that view, I'm really glad we got an oceanfront. That is gonna be fun. Yeah. We found a nice little log that's totally flat on top with a good little view. Hi Maddie. When we don't have the kids and it's happy hour, it's a great time for Trish and I to sort through all the next moves. What exactly the plan is. Because otherwise there's a lot of opinions. Wait a minute. Oh, here we go. Here's one of them. They find us they no matter where us. we go. I mean, we didn't even tell them. It hurts my eyes when I stay in this smoke. Smoke hurts my eyes because it... So when the smoke hurts my eyes, then it makes me have tears. Oh. I haven't woken up early for breakfast. I haven't even woken up early for a workout. <laughs> I woke up early to go to a bakery that's only open on Fridays and Saturdays from like eight to two. Anyway, it's called the Red Barn Marketplace. And right now they're opening 
and we gotta go see what's up. We are here at the Red Barn Baking Company and I just talked to Katie, the owner. Super, super nice. I invited her to be on the podcast. We'll see. She said she likes to be in the background. So we'll see if we can lure her in and share her story. And for now, I'm going to eat these. <laughs> are we just going to eat them all right here in the car in the parking lot? Um, isn't that a given? We're tasting all of these. The thing is, if we come home with these, the kids would just eat them. Oh, wow. <laughs> What, are you taking one bite of everything? Yes! <laughs> it's like he hasn't been married to me for 17 years. All right, all right. Oh my God. Is that amazing or what? So I was not was, expecting that. That was the flourless. Were you expecting that? A little bit. Flourless, but this is made to perfection. I mean, I've had these before and they're like rocks. This was like fluffy. I just, I can't even get over that. Okay, so that's that one. It's like I want to go back in there and hug her. <laughs> I do. I do. I'm so glad that she figured out she liked to bake. So far, we haven't been able to find like a park entrance. Here we go, Acadia National Park. Like I was saying, we're just about to come up on the park entrance. <laughs> I could stay Wish for this moment to never go away But it's all in my mind And though I know that there is nothing to find You're a beautiful sight in the summer night And you can't put up a fight in the misty light had to just pull over. What's cool about Acadia National Park is it's a loop. It's a two-lane loop. And although it looks like I've parked right in the middle of the road and there's oncoming traffic, as a matter of fact, you can just basically park in the right lane at any point, as you can see by the cars passing me. I think that is super cool. Even the park buses, like that one has no problem passing us so you can stop almost anywhere and grab your camera grab your phone hide your wife hide your kids and take a picture like that i can definitely see why acadia national park is the first national park of the east coast it is absolutely spectacular here it's like you're in the forest but there's aspen the ocean, you've got sailboats in the distance. I don't know if you can see all of those little dots out there, but those are all lobster trap traps. These rocks that come out and form are just absolutely beautiful. It's 82 degrees, it's sunny, amazing. The boys are begging for some tide pools. I mean like begging. So we found some. Let's go see. Let's go check them out. I'm gonna bring Trisha water score some points for bringing a water to her. You watch how this goes. It's about the delivery, not the gesture. The delivery. 
Here, babe, thought you might be thirsty. Oh, look at that. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Such a good guy. That's what I'm talking about. Man, where did the boys go? Oh, there they are. Where'd you get these clams? On the beach. Like that beach behind you? Yeah. Show me. Right there. Where? When the tide was out, we dug them up. Right? All right, and what do you got? And then you pulled these clams out? Yeah, and then what you do is you grab this, this little thing right here. It's, it's net. Wow, and you boiled them? Yeah, we boiled them. Where'd you boil them, on that pot behind you? Yeah, right there. With salt water. And then? Take it. Do you want one? No, I want to watch Do you it eat it. Do it for the video. I want to watch you eat it. Do it for the video. I'll video I you, you eat it. I want to watch no, you. No, I'll video you eat it. No, I really am fast. I'm like, I think it's really cool that you're eating clams. How is it? Good. Is it good because you caught it or is it good? It's good. So, Acadia National Park is so spectacular. A couple things come to mind. One is, national parks did not become national parks from being mediocre. So if there's a national park near you, it's probably worth a visit. And one of the things I'm kind of kicking myself right now is that we didn't get over here sooner when we came into Maine last week. Because the sooner we got in here, the sooner we'd be able to explore Acadia National Park and 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 discover the things that we wish we would have had more time for. Whereas now it's Sunday and I've got back-to-back -back meetings on Monday. Tuesday the truck's going in for air and we leave on Wednesday. And I think part of the reason that happens sometimes, it reminds me of, of Jim Collins. It reminds me of what Jim Collins wrote in the book Good to Great. He says, good is the enemy of great. We could be having a good time in Maine, but great takes effort. And it's hard to put forth that effort when things are just good. And it's probably the same when we were at home. If you have a good, comfortable life, it's hard to create a great life when you have a, a good life. It's hard to create the impetus for the change because change is difficult, selling things is difficult, prioritizing your life around your around travel is difficult. Those things take effort. But great is what you get from that. And good is often the things that are holding us back. That's my little mentor minute, if you will, for today as to what comes to mind. But you know, it brings me to one last point. Anytime you're out here in this type of wilderness or out the outdoors, so many awesome ideas and thoughts come to mind. And it's just another reason to spend the time out here that just kind of away from every day so that you can reflect and enjoy. Okay, that's it for now.